Helicopters are used for a variety of purposes, including transport, cargo handling, firefighting, search and rescue, and even simple aerial observation. These vertical flying machines have been around since 1936, when the Falkworth FW61 became the first operational helicopter ever made. Some full-scale production conducted by a man called Igor Sikorsky in 1942 led to the manufacturing of 131 helicopters. This singular action changed the face of what most call a complex equipment in flight. On this edition of the program, we take a look at helicopter operations in Africa's largest aviation market and how this impacts on the nation's economy. Welcome to Aviation This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Oketumbi. <laughs> Here at home, fire cover at airports and protection of firemen took center stage as the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria marked the International Firefighters Day. At the occasion, the representative of the managing director, Mr. John Wakwa, said all airports in Nigeria must be built with fire-resistant materials, adding that we as a people must set our own minimum standard far above that of International Civil Aviation Organization by installing more than the required firefighting equipment. Each of those fire major tenders must have five people manning it, 24 hours. Therefore, for 24 hours, you're going to have 12 people per vehicle. So if your airport has category 9 and you have three major tenders, okay? For those people to man those four, four, I mean three tenders, that's 12 times what? 12 times 4. Because you have three ships and you have one ship up. Isn't it? All right. We, we just have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of challenges. The transformation of the aerodrome rescue and firefighting services also requires strategic synergy with all relevant stakeholders, such as aircraft manufacturers, aircraft operators, aerodrome operators, air navigation service providers, aviation fuel service providers, aircraft maintenance organizations, aviation training organizations, medical service providers, civil aviation regulatory authorities, aircraft accident investigation bureau, airport communities, search and rescue agencies, security agencies, etc. Away from firefighting, the airport authority believes the airport remodeling exercise has indeed boosted Nigeria's image as Nigeria played host to the World Economic Forum Africa. We have people from all over the world coming to, into Nigeria and the first uh, contact they have with the country is this remodel terminals which shows a country that is serious about doing business with the world. Uh, some arrive from Lagos to Abuja. We have also the new international terminal for private jets. All that has come up to give Nigeria the kind of image that will be to reckon with internationally. From airports to passenger advice coming from Arik Air. The airline has alerted air travelers of new security measures put in place at Nigerian airports by the federal government and therefore advised all intending air travelers to set out early for their flights to avoid loss of travel time. The airline stated that the federal government's extra security measures in place at all airports is causing traffic snare on airport roads, leading to unforeseen delays or missed flights for travelers. The new security measures has led to visible presence of more security personnel across the nation's airports. Passengers are also advised to familiarize themselves with check-in procedures at the airport for domestic flights, regional and international flights. Away from the country, reports say a Nigerian woman on board a British Airways flight in Abuja, the federal capital territory, has given birth to a child 26 weeks into her pregnancy, while the aircraft was airborne at 36,000 feet above sea level. 
The aircraft made an emergency landing on the island of Palma de Mallorca in Spain so the woman and the newborn could receive medical attention. The aircraft, a Boeing 777 with 296 passengers, was en route from Abuja to London and had flown for a few hours when she went into labor. Women with full-term pregnancies are not allowed to travel by air, according to International Civil Aviation Organization regulations. As such, intending pregnant passengers are required to present medical reports certifying that they are less than 32 weeks pregnant before they are allowed to fly. Etihad Airways has laid out plans to offer passengers who find first-class seats a bit too tight a miniature suite featuring a closed-off bedroom, a private bathroom and a dedicated butler. This is just one strategy by airlines worldwide to attract high-spending customers. Etihad Chief Executive James Hogan conceded that offering what the airline says is the first of its kind multi-room suite helps generate buzz, but that ultimately it is a serious effort to bring in more cash. Etihad is the smallest of three rapidly expanding government-backed golf carriers withdrawing global aviation maps by funneling travelers through their desert hubs. As news flash winds down, the helicopter manufacturer Sikorsky has been picked to build the next fleet of U.S. presidential helicopters. The six aircraft to be built is worth $1.24 billion. The helicopter manufacturer says the design is based on the company's S-92, a twin-engined, medium-lift model. The project, called the VXX Presidential Helicopter Replacement Program, kicks off this year with $42 million in funding for research, development, test and evaluation. In addition to the six aircrafts to be delivered to the U.S. Marine Corps, Sikorsky will also deliver two simulators. Those aircrafts will be delivered in 2018 under the terms of the contract. It's time to take a break. Evasion this week will return in a moment. About a hundred helicopters currently fly the Nigerian skies and are run by six operators in the country. These operations are mostly concentrated around the oil and gas industry of the Niger Delta. Essentially, helicopter operations, uh, the, 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 the business that we run, uh, involve both uh, onshore and offshore support. Uh, we provide support for the oil and gas market, uh, the sector, uh, which is a very critical part uh, of the Nigerian economy. As you know, oil is the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. And so helicopter operations uh, form a critical part uh, of the support, uh, that we pro the logistic support that is provided. And what we essentially do is to move our crew uh, and equipment uh, and uh, assets you know, from uh, one point to the other. Other services include emergency medical evacuation, search and rescue, VIP movement, and third party helicopter maintenance. But in all of this, safety remains a top priority. The aviation industry, as I said, has a margin, you know, of zero, you know, uh, uh, for for all kinds of risks. And so, um, in addition to the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the standards we've set for ourselves in safety, uh, there are also regulatory standards and there are global best practices uh, that you adopt, you know, in order to ensure that um, you run a safe operation. Uh, you have procedures, you have manuals, you know, that people have to adhere to. And there is, uh, there is. Uh, we also have a, a, a uh, we operate uh, what we call a non punitive policy uh, in aviation uh, to encourage people to continue to report incidents, to continue to report occurrences, and uh, to report deviations from the rule, uh, so that we can uh, we can 
we can address those issues, we can address those infractions, and correct those people, not sanction them. Uh, aviation does not uh, place a premium on sanctions. The helicopters currently being operated in the country consist of light, medium, and large range, while the light one consists of those of four to five seats, medium consists of 10 to 15 seats, while large consists of 15 to 19 seats, operating into over 200 onshore helipads and 200 offshore helidex. Welcome back. Running an unscheduled aviation business in Nigeria is no mean feat, as training for helicopter pilots is capital intensive and non existent in Nigeria. So, the federal government should be making more investments in this direction. These are the words of the managing director of Bristol Helicopters, Captain Ake Oni, as he joins us on our interview segment. 